Now if you want to attach some files, pictures, videos to your email message, you can do it one of many ways. One way is to come up here on the Message tab and go to the Include group and click on Attach File. Or if you're on the Insert tab, you got the same group, Include, click on Attach File. Or if you have your window restored so it doesn't fill up the entire screen and you can see, well let me minimize the window behind it down to the taskbar, your desktop where you've got pictures, files, you can click and drag them right into the body of the message. In fact, let me go ahead and open up the Exercises folder, double click, and I've got my document here. Now, if you don't see the extension after the name of the file, .docx or .xlsx, don't worry about that. That's proprietary to my computer. Basically, it tells the operating system what program to open up this file in, and I'd like to see that. And so if you want to learn more about extensions, then watch my Windows training video on extensions in any case. I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag a file into the body of the message. It won't allow you to drag it into the subject or the two or carbon copy fields. So in the body, let go and there you go. It's attached. Oh, isn't that fun? Let's go ahead and close out of there. And then if I'm like, oh, I made a mistake, you can do one of a couple of things. Either right click on it and you get a shortcut menu of options. Or let me click off. You can click on the corresponding drop down arrow and you get the same menu of options. So you can open it, quickly print it, save it as, meaning that you can save a copy of it to the desktop, or remove the attachment, cut, copy, or select all. Let's remove it, and let's restore this, and let me show you the other ways. So if you're on the message, well, let's do it from the Insert tab, the Include group. Click on the Attach File drop-down arrow. When you do that, it's going to show you a list of all the recent items you were working on. So that way, if you've been working on the outline or you recently attached it, click on it. Hey, there it is. Select that and automatically attaches it. Now, if it's not in that shortcut list, let's go to the Message tab to the Include group. Same thing, Attach File. And you're like, it's not one of the recent items. Go ahead and click on Browse PC. And, well, you can come over here in the Navigation pane and go to the Desktop and then over in the main window. It's in the Exercises folder on the Desktop. Double-click and, hey, there we go. So if I want to include all the rest besides the outline document, I can select the Import Contacts Excel Workbook that was made in an earlier version of Excel. Hold down the Control key so I can do nonlinear selections, multiple selections that is. And I've selected these three. Click on Insert and voila, there we go. Now I have a total of four attachments. Now something you need to know about attachments like your Word document that once you attach it, it's separate from the actual document in my exercises folder on the desktop. For example, after I attach it, if I want to make some personal changes to the document, double click on it to open it up. And then let's see, if I deleted some text here, well, let's just go ahead and really exaggerate. Let's delete everything so I just have unique and click save. It saves it as the attachment. It doesn't overwrite the original document that you inserted, well, in this case, my exercises folder on my desktop, into the email message. So it should be untouched. Only the attachment has been changed. You want to check it out? Alrighty. Let's go ahead and close out of here and minimize this down to the taskbar and go to my exercises folder, double click, and double click outline. And it's still there, including unique. Oh, that's unique. Let's go ahead and close out of there and restore the window here. And so double click on the outline document that's been attached to it. And like I said, it only affects changes that you made to the attachment and not the original file on my desktop in the exercises folder. Close out. And that's good to know because maybe after you attach it, you're like, okay, I want to make it proprietary to this person and delete or insert some additional text. Go for it and then just be sure to save it when you're done. And when you close out, it's right there. Now, in addition to file image attachments, pictures, videos, audio, you can also attach Outlook items. So back up here on the Message tab, go to the Include group, and there you go. Attach item. That's an Outlook item. As you can see in the pop-up, attach a business card, calendar, or an other Outlook item. So click on the drop-down arrow, and if it's not a business card or a calendar, maybe it's another email message, like one that she sent to me that she wants to have me resend back to her because maybe she deleted it. In any case, go ahead and choose Outlook item. Opens it up. It has a list of all the folders that contains those items or store those items, like for email messages in your inbox or drafts or messages that you sent. 
any calendar, contacts, journals. Let's keep it simple. So in my inbox, she sent me this. She replied, and now she wants me to send it back to her in any case. With it selected, if I had more, just select the one that you want to go ahead and attach to the email message. And you can do it either as an attachment or as text only. So if I do it as an attachment and click OK, oh, I gotta scroll down. There you go. There's the Outlook item and the subject with the RE, meaning that she replied to my email message and used quote for marketing purposes. So she's got it there. Let's go ahead and right click on it and remove it. And say that instead of attaching that Outlook item, let's go ahead and insert it as text. That was the other option. So come up here and click on Attach Item. Let's do Outlook Item again. We're in the inbox, and in the inbox, it's the same email. So we can do it as text, select it. When I click OK, wherever my cursor was at, that's where it's going to insert the contents of this email. So when I click OK, let's see where the cursor was at. Just right at the end there. So I can go ahead and hit Enter a couple of times. And from that point all the way down is all the contents from that email message. So maybe you want to attach it there. And that way you can go ahead and delete some of the stuff that's not pertinent and update it or add some additional text to it. And if not, let me just go ahead and delete that. And we're back to where we started. How about other Outlook items? See how they go. Come up here to the Message tab, Include, Attach Items. Let's do a business card. Ooh, we got quite a few of them. Well, I don't have that many fans. The ones that I do have here are made up. In any case, you can choose it from here or say Other Business Cards. Let's do Other and see what we got. And this is the contacts. That's my default contacts folder. And I made additional contacts folder called personal. One's for my business and the other are my personal friends. Let's go ahead and select that. And oh, I don't have too many personal friends. I better go back to business. In any case, your flavor. Go ahead and choose who you want to include. And you can hold down the control key to go ahead and do multiple selections. Or if you select one, hold down the shift key and select well, three after, it'll select everything from the initial all the way down to the last selection. That is holding the shift key. Let's just go ahead and do Barney Fife. And then click OK to see what it looks like. And there we go. And if everything looks grisly, let's go ahead and send that off to Carrie. Click on Send. Oh, let's go restore our Outlook program. And it's out of the Outbox. It's gone. Now remember, every time you send off an email, it creates a copy of it over here in the Sent Items folder, so select it. And there it is with the paper clip to indicate that you got attachments to it. Now that's important because when it comes to backing up your Outlook program, if you got things that you sent off, like huge video files, that's going to take up a lot more bandwidth when it comes to backing it up. Or maybe your IT person has put a, a size limit on your Sent Items folder or maybe other folders within your data file. So you can do one of a couple of things. You can either go ahead and open it back up on the sent file and say, okay, well, I've got a huge file here of a picture. I know it's 421 kilobytes, but let's pretend it's huge, like maybe 50 megabytes, or maybe it's a video file, two gigabytes. I mean, that's really huge. In any case, you can go ahead and right click on it and remove it and then save your message so it's no longer sitting in your inbox. Now, if you do want to keep it for reference purposes later on, well, the other options you can do is, of course, you can right-click on it and do a Save As, and then save that to a folder on your desktop. That works, and then you'll have those images that you send off, but then I assume you already have them on your computer because we attached it to it. But if you want to keep these images with this email message and you're just set on doing that, close out, you can create another folder here that's, well, if you're connected to the Exchange server, that there are size limits that the IT person put on some of these folders. Create another folder and then just go ahead and drag that item into that other folder, a folder that doesn't have a size limit put on it. And I'll show you that in a later training video. I mean, for me, there are times when I send off a video that I'm like, oh, that's okay. I don't want it to be sitting here in the sent items folder when I back up Outlook because if I have a lot of images and videos just junking it up, I got a huge data file for Outlook because of all that and it takes a long time to back up everything so I may go ahead and open up and remove them from my sent items folder in those email messages. Whatever works best for you, there are some options. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like when somebody sends us an email message with a bunch of attachments. In fact I had Carrie go ahead and take the email that I sent to her with my attachments and just forward it back to me. So let's go back to our inbox 
let's rush this by coming up here and clicking on send receive and not wait for it to automatically pull in but hey there we go from carry and it's right there select it over in the reading pane I can get a preview of everything there and hi Kurt here are the attachments you wanted me to send back to you carry oh isn't that nice and I can click on the drop down arrow and go ahead and open it up but instead of doing it from the reading pane let's just go ahead and double click to open it up and from here you can actually select the document in this case and get a preview of it down below and or the Excel spreadsheets or the contact card that we sent off Barney Fife all his information down below and even the image hey these guys are crazy they're having so much fun and then to go back to the message to read why these attachments are here hopefully they explained it oh look the image dimension that's nice click on back to the message and hi Kurt here are the attachments you wanted me to send back to you and then of course if they were from her the originals and they weren't what I sent to her and I want to be able to get this out of the email message because it's taking up a lot of space like in the inbox and I want to keep the email in the inbox but not all these images or videos or whatever she sent me that takes up a lot of space again you can simply right click and go down to save as and then go to the desktop and it's video training or I can just rename that and call it two dudes having fun click save and then let's come down below in our Windows operating system and click on the show desktop and you can see it right on my desktop over on the left hand side see so when I go over there it brings it back this is just a peak preview or I can click on it, minimize everything down to the taskbar, so I can come on the desktop, and there's the two dudes, double click. Whoa, they're having intense fun. Close out, and then to restore everything, or maybe just the window here, let's go ahead and just do the email message, click on the corresponding button, and we're back to where we started. Now a couple things you need to know when it comes to attachments is that if somebody sends you an email and you don't see the colored icon here, it's like a white sheet of paper. One thing that may have happened is that it doesn't have an extension to the name so the operating system can't tell what program to open up this file in that's why I like seeing an extensions because I looked at them enough to go okay XLS is for Excel XLS is Excel but that's an earlier version and in any case I could go ahead and hit reply and say okay the file that you sent me what program did you open it up in and if she said it was Excel then I would know that I can go ahead and edit this after I saved it to my desktop and add the extension .xls so I can tell the operating system to open up this file in the Excel program. In any case, that gets a little bit intense. You can watch my Windows training video on extensions. But not only that, you may actually see, let me close out of here, and restore Outlook, where you get a paper clip, but when you look over here, you don't see anything there. Or when you double click to open it up, you don't see any attachments. Well, why is there a paper clip showing you that there's attachments when there aren't any? Well, Outlook will block attached files that it considers as dangerous. For example, it doesn't like .exe files, extensions for executable programs, because if you double click on it, you get no chance of saving your computer if there's a virus in there, because it may immediately start executing some code that will destroy everything. So it blocks some of those files. Now for the files that it does accept, it's, well, obviously Microsoft's own favorites, the Word documents, Excel, images in JPEG or PNG format or other formats, you know, contacts, Adobe PDF documents, and also zip files. So if you do have an executable file or other files that doesn't allow you to view them here to be able to open them up, then go ahead and zip them up or compress them into a zip file and then you'll be able to send them off and the person will get the zip file, double click to open it up, decompress it and extract those files from it or those executable files and any other files that Outlook considers dangerous. In any case, be safe with that and just know if somebody sends you an email and you just see a paper clip and you're like, hey, I don't see anything here. Go ahead and reply back to them and say, look, what did you send me? Because Outlook is blocking it and you need to put it in a zip file so I can receive it and then I'll just go ahead and double click on the zip file, open it up and extract that to my desktop and be able to open up those contents. Well, let's do this. Let me hit two birds with one stone. Let me go ahead and restore this down so I can see the desktop. In fact, I'm not going to be able to do it from here as easy. Let me double click to open up the message again and then restore that down. Come over here. And on my desktop, let me give it a right click and go down to New and create a folder. And the default name's New Folder. That's fine. 
just click off to solidify it. And then let's go ahead and select one of the files. In fact, hold down the shift key and click on all the rest. And another way to move these to your desktop is just with a click and drag, but I'm going to move it over into the folder. And you can see my pointer has a little fuzzy block underneath it, and it's got a plus sign. The fuzzy block is the contents that I'm dragging, and the plus sign means that it's not actually moving it. The plus is in addition, meaning that it's creating a copy of what I have selected and putting it over when I let go into the new folder. So there in the new folder, if I want to go ahead and send these back to Carrie, because let's pretend that these are programs that Outlook blocks. So to go ahead and zip this up and send it to her, we can, well, right click on the folder. And I have what's called WinZip that I can go ahead and add it to the zip file. When you guys right click on your folder, you'll get something else if you don't have WinZip installed on your computer. So when you right click, for me it's add to zip file. So it's up to you if you want to have something that does a little bit more than just the default, what Windows has. I've got this zip program that when I go ahead and add a zip file, I can just say, yeah, go ahead and click add. And it says, where do you want the zip file to be? I want it on the desktop and select that as the zip folder, as the place to add the compressed or zip folder or zip file to. Click OK. And then it's on the desktop. Let's go ahead and minimize that down. Minim oh, it's right there. See? So that's what it looks like with the extension .zip. Again, you won't see the extensions, but I do because it's what I chose to see in my Windows operating system here. In which case, you got this little crunch on this filing cabinet that's saying that this is compressed. When you hover over it, you can see in the pop-up, it's got a list of all those files. So when I want to go ahead and respond to Carrie with what I have here, or just create a new email message. Let's just do that. Click on the Home tab, click on New Email. If I want to insert it, I can come over here on the Message tab to the Include group. And since it's the most recent thing I've been working on, when I click on Attach File, it's just right there. I mean, how cool is that? Click on it, and there it is. It's got all the contents in that zip file that when I send it to Carrie, Outlook won't block it. And then she can just go ahead and open it up and extract the contents therein. For example, let me go ahead and close out of here and say No. Restore that, and I'm going to have Carrie go ahead and send off to us a zip file so we know what it looks like and know what to do. And then just come up here and click on Send and Receive to speed things up, and there you go. You got the little paper clip. There's an attachment. Go ahead and select it, and that's what it looks like. A vise, a clamp around a filing cabinet, and select it. And it says you should only preview files from a trustworthy source. Am I trustworthy? Of course I am. So I can click on preview and it shows me in the zip file, so cool, that you can see that I've got the VCF, which is the business card, and then XLS, the Excel file for import contacts, documents, and the picture. So to go ahead and extract that, give it a double click. It says you should only open up attachments from a trustworthy source. I say open, and there's the contents there. And if you're not using WinZip, you'll get the option to go ahead and click on the browse button to select like your desktop to unzip the contents within the folder. And for me, it's just this one right up here. Let's see, one click to unzip. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and unzip to my PC. So when I click on that, I want it to be to my desktop. So I'll expand that, go to users, to training, and keep navigating down there to my desktop. Well, I better have a folder for that, new folder, and call it something spiffy. Hit enter, and then double click to empty the contents into that folder and say unzip. And not only did it unzip it, but it opened up the spiffy folder with those files within that zip file. Cool. And so it's on the desktop. We can close out of here, close out of the WinZip program. And let's minimize this down to the taskbar. And there's my spiffy folder. Double click to open it up and everything's there. Great. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.